Hi students. So today, as a part of the nanomaterials, I am going to discuss one of the preparation or synthetic method for the preparation or synthesis of nanomaterials. So that particular synthetic method or preparation method about which I am going to discuss today is gas condensation processing method. Gas condensation processing method. So before going to discuss how making use of gas condensation processing method we can prepare the nanomaterials first and foremost let us discuss why this particular method preparation method or synthetic method is so called as gas condensation processing. So this particular method is called as gas condensation processing because of the following reason because in this particular method of preparation or synthesis of the nanomaterials the metal is considered as the precursor and this metal is heated beyond its melting point by which it gets vaporized that is the metals are getting converted into the gases the metals will be vaporized means the metal will be vaporized into the gas and uh, those gas molecules, that is metallic gas molecules are condensed and processed into the nanomaterials. So that is the reason this particular method is so called as gas condensation processing method. The metal is being uh, vaporized into the gas which is being condensed which is being processed as the nanomaterials. That is the reason this particular method is called as gas condensation processing. And do remember students, making use of this particular method, we can prepare the composite nanomaterials. We can prepare the composite nanomaterials. Composite nanomaterials. So we have a wide variety of the nanomaterials. So among the wide variety of nanomaterials, we can prepare the composite nanomaterials. So most oftenly making use of gas condensation processing, we can prepare copper bismuth, which is one of the composite nanomaterial. Or we can prepare tungsten and gallium, which is another composite nanomaterial, which can be prepared or synthesized making use of this particular gas condensation processing method. Right. Now, this is the equipment. This is the equipment which is required for carrying out the gas condensation processing. That is, this is the equipment by which we can convert the metal, which is the precursor in this particular gas condensation processing into the composite nanomaterials. And this is the schematic diagram of the equipment which is required for this particular method. Now, so this particular method consists of, consists of, this is the refractory crucible. This is nothing but a refractory, refractory crucible, refractory crucible. And we are well versed that refractory material means the material which can withstand to very high temperature. Refractory crucible means the crucible which can withstand to very high temperature is called as refractory crucible. And this refractory crucible can be either made up of tungsten, tungsten, or it can be made up of uh, tantalum, or it can be made up of molybdenum, molybdenum. Right. So this refractory crucible in which we are going to take the metal is either made up of tungsten or tantalum or molybdenum. Or molybdenum. Or molybdenum. Right. Now the metal is taken in the refractory crucible, which is either made up of tungsten, tantalum, or the molybdenum. Right. After taking the metal in this refractory crucible, 
this particular metal is either heated by means of the joule heating or laser ablation. So what do you mean by joule heating? Joule heating, joule heating is a process, is a process in which the electric current is passed through the conductor in order to generate the heat. That is nothing but joule heating. And what is laser ablation? I have clearly explained in one of the video in which I have clearly explained how making use of the laser ablation we can prepare the carbon nanotubes. Right. So if you want to know the clear idea about the laser ablation, please do watch my video I have exclusively made on the laser ablation method for the preparation of carbon nanotubes. Now these are the two heating methods. Now these are the two heating methods by which we can heat the, the metal which is present in the refractory crucible. Refractory crucible. Now we have to discuss under which conditions we have to consider the jowl heating or under, under which conditions or under what circumstances we have to consider the laser ablation. So in this particular method, Generally, we will use the joule heating process. And what is joule heating already explained? And whenever the melting point of this metal which is taken in the refractory furnace, ref refractory crucible is very high or the metal is reacting with the refractory crucible, then we have to go with laser ablation. Laser ablation. So whenever we are going to use either the jowl heating or the laser ablation, definitely we have to know under what circumstances jowl heating is being used, under what circumstances laser ablation is being used. So that is the purpose. Right. Now, from this particular inlet, we have to pass the carrier gas. We have to pass the carrier gas and the carrier gas in this use is either helium argon or krypton helium argon or krypton is being used as a carrier gas now we have to discuss what is the role of the carrier gas in this so two roles are associated with the carrier gas the one role is the name itself suggests that this is the gas which carries the carries the carries the vapors of the metal which have been formed by either the jowl heating or the laser ablation into this chamber. Into this chamber where the condensation of the vapor takes place. So that is the one role associated with the carrier gas which is either the helium organ or krypton. And the second role associated with this particular carrier gas is it maintains the inert gas atmosphere inert gas atmosphere in this particular chamber the next chamber inert gas atmosphere so inert gas atmosphere means unreactive so because it should not react with any of the substance if it is getting reacting with any of the substance so instead of getting the nanometers you are going to get the different chemical substances so definitely there is a need to maintain the inert conditions in order to maintain the inert conditions so definitely we have to use the carrier gas so there are the two roles associated with the carrier gas students so what are the two roles i have clearly explained to you right now under the influence of either the jowl heating or laser ablation the metal is heated above its melting point Whenever the substance is heated above its melting point, what happens? It vaporizes in the similar fashion. Whatever the metal which is present in the refractory crucible is vaporized. But it won't have the enough energy to travel into this particular chamber where the condensation process takes place. So that job is done by the carrier gas. With the help of this particular inlet, we are going to pass the carrier gas. Now, these carrier gas molecules will carry the 
vapors of the metals which are being formed either under the influence of the joule heating or the laser ablation into this chamber into this chamber more amount of the carrier gas is passed into this and by means of the pump it is being removed out in order to maintain the dynamic vacuum under dynamic vacuum conditions only the condensation of uh, condensation of the metallic papers takes place so there is a need to maintain the dynamic there is a need to, to maintain the dynamic vacuum and in order to maintain the dynamic vacuum what we need to do we have to continuously pass the carrier gas into the second chamber when we continuously pass the carrier gas into the second chamber and uh, by means of the pumps it is being removed the dynamic vacuum is being generated in the chamber and by means of the dynamic equilibrium or dynamic vacuum conditions the vapors gets condensed vapors get condensed now these vapors are very hot they won't uh, easily condense they will be in the form of the liquid droplets they will be in the form of the liquid droplets right now these vapors which are in the form of the liquid droplets why these are in the form of the liquid droplets friends the reason is we are supplying humongous or humongous means voluminous large amount of heat to the metal in order to convert the solid metallic particles into the vapor metallic particles so as we are supplying a large amount of the heat to the metal the meat metal is getting vaporized and it is very hot so since it is very hot so definitely it will be in the it will be in the liquid condition since it is in the liquid condition it cannot be easily condensed it cannot be easily condensed so in order to condense what we have to do students already have discussed we have to maintain the dynamic vacuum right not only that now this is the cluster of uh, this is the cluster of uh, the vaporized metallic particles cluster of vaporized metallic particles so this cluster of uh, metallic vaporized particles as they are in the liquid form they should be condensed right and they there is this condensation of uh, this cluster of uh, the metallic liquid vapors takes place on the surface of the rotating cylinder rotating cylinder which is nothing but cold finger students which is nothing but a cold finger so this is the rotating cylinder which is nothing but cold finger cold finger is nothing but localized cold surface containing liquid nitrogen under the influence of the liquid nitrogen what happens is thermophoretic effect comes into picture thermophoretic effect thermophoretic effect thermophoretic effect comes into picture now what do you mean by thermophoretic effect thermophoretic effect is the effect by which the particles are repelled from the hot surface and attracted to the cold surface now here students the vapors of the the vapors of the metals are accumulated on the surface of the hot chamber and due to the thermophoretic effect they are repelled from the hot chamber or hot surface and attracted towards the cold surface what is the cold surface the cold surface is nothing but the cold finger why the name is cold finger because it will be in the form of a finger that is the reason this particular cylindrical tube in which the liquid nitrogen as the coolant is present as the coolant is present is called as cold finger cold finger now due to the thermophoretic effect what happens is what happens is these 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 vapors of the metals which are hot will accumulate on the surface of uh, this is accumulate on the surface of the cylindrical tube which is rotating so which is rotating students that is the reason i have 
labeled with the direction it is rotating continuously so all the vapors of the metallic particles are accumulated on the surface of uh, this rotating uh, cold finger right now these vapors are cold now vapors are cold and this metallic vapors have been converted into the nanoparticles have been converted into nanoparticles due to the pulleys due to the pulleys due to pulleys pulleys means what merging or joining of the vapors so merging or the joining of the vapors takes place due to the merging or joining of the vapors uh, what happens is the nano materials will accumulate uh, on the surface of uh, this particular cold finger now our nano materials or the nano particles have been formed which are formed on the surface of the cold finger now what we need to do we have to scrape these nano materials or nano particles which have been accumulated on the surface of uh, the cold finger which is done by the scraper so this scraper will scrape uh, all the nano particles which will be obtained in the form of a powder which is usually the composite nano materials which i already have discussed because by means of this gas condensation processing what we are going to prepare students we are going to prepare the composite nano materials so those composite nano materials sir uh, with the help of scraper or scraped uh, and collected in the particle correction chamber particle correction chamber now whatever the particles which are being collected in this chamber are nothing but nano particles are nothing but nano particles now the metal is being converted into the nano particles so this is how making use of uh, the gas condensation processing so we can prepare or synthesize the composite nano materials making use of the metals as a precursor and uh, the refractory crucible is required as well as uh, the carrier gas is required and uh, what is the role of refractory furnace or refractory crucible and uh, what is the joule uh, heating what is the laser ablation carrier gas everything have explained very clearly so if there is any ambiguity in between the joule heating and the laser ablation please do watch the video which i have exclusively made on the laser ablation method for the preparation of carbon nanotubes i hope you got this you understood this particular preparation or synthesis of the composite nano materials making use of gas condensation processing method thanks for watching